Welcome everyone to NCEA's Open Houses, the ultimate opportunity to promote your school brand webinar. My name is Kate Reich and I am the organizer for today's event. Please know that all of your microphone connections with today's webinar have been muted. During the presentation, you may ask questions or provide comments for the presenter by using the chat and or question functions located in the GoToWebinar panel on your screen. To use these functions, click on the chat or question bubble and then click into the blank box area and enter your question using your keyboard. Then click Send. The presentation will run for 40 to 45 minutes, leaving some time at the end for the presenter to answer any questions that you have provided. You will be asked to complete a brief evaluation about this webinar later today and your feedback is greatly appreciated. Lastly, this webinar is being recorded and you will all receive a copy of the final recorded presentation which we will email to you once that recorded file is available. Now I am very pleased to introduce Renee Kiro Spite, who is the Director of Enrollment Management and Marketing for the Diocese of Arlington as today's webinar presenter. Please welcome Renee. Well, hi there, Kate, and hi everybody out there in webinar land. Um, as Kate said, my name is Renee Kiro Spite, and I am the Director of Enrollment Management and Marketing for the Diocese of Arlington. It's uh, a great position and uh, we're really fortunate in this diocese to uh, have the resources to be able to do um, and offer the kinds of things that I can offer to our school. So uh, tonight I wanted to talk about open houses, the ultimate opportunity to promote your school brand because there is no other opportunity where everything kind of comes together, where you can uh, display not only your facility, but your, um, your, the folks that uh, work there, your students, your parent community, and then, of course, all of the wonderful things that go on in your school. So when you're preparing your uh, open house, you really want to to approach it as a come and see. In other words, you want that parent to imagine his or her child in the, that seat, in that classroom, and uh, that family part of the community. Um, some schools like to do a uh, present an open house when it's just the teachers, and, and that's fine. I think you, you need to really do uh, provide several different types of open houses, but the kind of open house I'm going to talk about this evening is the open house where everybody is in, uh, in session. So one of the interesting things about uh, parents and their, their habits and why they choose the things that they choose goes against sort of what we thought for a long time. You know, when, when parents write down in a survey what the most important thing to them is, generally they're going to say either Catholic identity, faith, or they're going to say academics is the most important thing. And, and it's not necessarily that those things aren't really important, but really when they make a decision on a school, they're really taking a look at the school and answering the question, how will this school benefit my child? So, Catholic identity is important, it's certainly not mutually exclusive to anything else, and academics are important. They sort of expect those two things are going to be uh, offered at your school. What they want to see is all of the other things that are going to round out that child's experience and really goes along with our mission as Catholic school educators to, uh, to develop the whole person. So, Having said that, I just want to say a little bit about my background in, in that regard. I am a former teacher. I taught high school, middle school, and fourth grade one year um, as a favor for a friend of mine. I'm a Catholic school parent. My daughter uh, went all the way through Catholic school, Catholic college, and she's now teaching in one of our schools. And um, I've also been a principal 
of uh, two different schools. So when I look at open houses, I'm looking at them from many different perspectives. From the perspective of the parent that's walking in with my child for the very first time, from the perspective as a teacher and how the school community operates together, from the perspective of the administrator and trying to pull it all together because you know it's very you're very busy and principals are extremely extremely busy you're you're running a, a multi-million dollar business and all of the things that go along with that so uh, when we talk about open houses I'm kind of looking at it from from all those perspectives so how is this school program going to benefit this child well when you're looking at that, you want to look at how you're going to advertise it. Certainly, there are lots and lots of ways to do that, to accomplish that. But what are my venues going to be? Is it going to be print? Is it going to be the web? Is it going to be snail mail? Is it going to be in the parish bulletin? Because after all, the school is the ministry of the parish. Am I going to do posters? Am I going to produce yard signs? Uh, generally, word of mouth is very inexpensive and very effective, but how can I utilize that along with using my website and using um, web or electronic media such as greatschools.com? All right, a, a word about uh, the cost involved. You don't have to spend a lot of money. A lot of, you know, I mean, you can do this very inexpensively. And I would suggest, if it's the first time you've done it, I'd, I'd be cautious as to what, what means of communication I would use. I'd also take a look at what market I want to break into or I want to target. If, for example, I have a large Hispanic community, I'm going to uh, maybe concentrate a lot on social media. You know, did you know that 68% of Hispanics use Facebook, Twitter, or other social networking sites? And 49% own a smartphone as opposed to 46% of whites. And 76% of Hispanics have access to the internet or cell phone or tablet as opposed to 60% of white families. So, you know, if I was if that was a group I was looking to reach, certainly I would make use of, of electronic means. And these numbers come from a presentation given by Dr. Susan Raymond from Changing Our World. Um, she's, she was wonderful, very knowledgeable, and she gave a great presentation to the Arlington Diocese a, a few months ago. So. Uh, when I'm looking at greatschools.com and I'm looking at my website, understand that by the time a family gets to your, your open house or calls for a tour, they've already, con they've already conducted all of their research online. They've already you know, looked at greatschools.com. They've already looked at your website. So a word of uh, just a gentle reminder to make sure that that website is current that it you know doesn't have old things on there. Look up your school on greatschools.com or Patch if you have that in your area. See what other people are saying about you, and encourage uh, some of your families, perhaps PTO members or even one of your teachers, to post some things that are recent that are positive. Um, that really goes a long way to the overall rating of your school. Uh, in addition to that, we can take a look then at some resource guides. Uh, this uh, presentation really is concentrating on open houses uh, that, uh, that may or may not be part of the January Discover, or excuse me, the January uh, Catholic Schools Week uh, celebration that's a national celebration. And as you know, this year the uh, tagline is uh, Communities of Faith, Knowledge, and Service. So NCEA has uh, done a really great job of providing some very useful resource materials. One is this marketing handbook. 
in addition to that, they have they offer lots of uh, Catholic school snaps that have you know information about just the statistics regarding Catholic schools and Catholic education. So uh, I would highly encourage you to to make use of those. So let's take a, a look at my my pipeline. Okay, the pipeline is, of course, the people that you want to get into your school, you want to bring into your school. So one of the best places to look is your own parish. All right, so the parish baptisms is a, is a, provides a, a great resource. And I, I stole an idea from the NCEA's Barely Recruiting Program in trying to reach out to those families. So as a principal, what I would do is when a new child was baptized in, in my parish, I would send off a little note of, you know, you know, God bless you or many blessings on this very special day. I might send a onesie with the, uh, with the uh, school logo in cartoon format, you know, future same example school, whatever, um, and uh, and that's how I would initiate contact. Now, the NCEA Barely Recruiting Program makes that contact with one of your current second graders and that baptized child, and then follows up every year with that child on the anniversary of their baptism. It's really, really effective, and but you know you can tailor it to, to however your situation is going to, however it's going to work the best. Um, area preschools, if you don't have a lot of preschools or you have a few preschools, it's a really great idea to make contact with those directors and those teachers. Sometimes you're lucky enough to have someone in your school community that is a member of that preschool or went to that preschool, and so you can get the, in, you know, the introduction that way. Um, if you don't have that, then, you know, why not start off the school year with some a tin of muffins or Christmas cookies if we're getting ready for Catholic Schools Week in January. Um, you know, just to say, you know, Merry Christmas or um, maybe if it's a cold day or something, you send, send that over with cocoa. I, you know, I don't know. But anything to start the conversation. You certainly don't want to show up to a preschool the very first time and say, hi, here I am. Here's information about my open house. Can you display it? Because that's just not that's just not being a good neighbor. So um, you know, start those invitations, have that sort of communication back and forth, and and you just never know. Um, it could really develop into something even more meaningful. Uh, Mom's morning out groups. Maybe there is a group in your parish. If you don't have one, certainly it's a great idea to start one. Um, whether it's your parish or it's another church. Uh, moms of toddlers are always looking for things to do. So maybe your school could host uh, something, I don't know, something at your school. Maybe the, the kindergarten is doing a play and, you, you know, you invite the kids over to, uh, to watch the play. I don't know. But the same kind of thing, you know, you're going to initiate that relationship with something other than, oh, here's an invitation to my open house. Um, friends of current families, uh, maybe these are people that have just moved to the area, maybe they're military families, those folks get moved around a lot, or, or somebody that you, somebody knows in their neighborhood. All of these things, the baptisms, the preschools, the mom's morning out, all of them really start with a connection that already exists in your school or perish in some form or another. And so you want to really leverage off of that. Now, a word of caution regarding uh, uh, families that have children that are a little bit older. Now, once a family makes the decision to homeschool or to go the public school route or, or maybe another private school, they're very unlikely to come back to the parish school or the Catholic school, unless, of course, there's some dissatisfaction with their current situation. So putting a lot of time, effort, and energy into courting those families is not going to give you the results that you really want. 
you, you really want to concentrate your pipeline recruitment efforts in those younger families. Um, and that's going to yield you uh, better, better, better results. So in the, uh, you figured out your, how you're going to do your advertising, or you decided anyway if it's print, if it's web, it's, it's uh, Twitter, it's Facebook, it's whatever. Um, and now you are starting to collect your invitation list then about five to six weeks before, uh, you want to make sure that you have all of your materials printed or at least set up to print. So let me talk a little bit about that. Uh, I have here invitations, marketing materials, and admissions packets. If you take a look at the marketing materials, which is that white rectangle with the squares of the tip faces on it, the uh, that is a school directory and it's for our Arlington schools. And it's also the template, basically, for all of the marketing materials that we've used this year for our own Discover Catholic Schools Week, which we, we uh, run in November. We, it's a special just Arlington Discover Catholic Schools. And um, so my posters, my directory, uh, this Animoto that I'm going to show you in a few minutes, all of it has the same look. Uh, the photographs are from a professional photographer. Early on, uh, well, in the last 18 months, I have gone from school to school. I've done about 20 schools. And uh, I take the photographer out, and we do some staged authenticity. <laughs> um, it's really difficult in the moment of a school event to capture the kind of quality photograph you need with an iPhone or a smartphone. And it really, you know, people have gotten a lot more sophisticated in their advertising appetites. And having a high resolution, good quality picture is better than anything. And as, uh, also, when you're putting together your ads and your marketing materials, the general rule of thumb is that 20% of your ad should have, no more than 20% of your ad should have words. It should be mostly picture or mostly white space that will draw you in to the words. And that's a really hard habit to break because we want to put everything in the ad and we can only afford to do a quarter page ad or an eighth of a page ad. And really, at some point, six fonts gets just to be too hard to read and it gets lost on the page. So you're going to follow that same rule of thumb um, on all of your printed materials in terms of advertising materials. No more than about 20% of the space should be taken up with words. Um, so the invitations, um, the same kind of a thing. If you don't have access to a professional photographer, perhaps there's a school parent that you can bring in one day who maybe dabbles in photography. And you're just going to go around the school and and take a picture you know, of kids in the science lab or kids laughing or kids uh, hanging out uh, you know, at their lockers. And, and make sure you zero in on the faces. That's the main thing. If you think about being at a checkout stand at the grocery store, you're, you're going to look at magazines. The ones that really draw you in are the ones that have the face really just takes up most of the of the magazine. So we can kind of use that as a guide when we're creating our own marketing materials. Um, our admissions packets should be very clean, very organized, like this burgundy thing down here in the corner. It includes a letter, welcome letter from the principal, possibly the principal, and signed by the pastor, maybe the business cards. And really, no more than about three pieces of paper, one being a, a checklist of all of the things that you would need to apply to the school. 
Uh, another being maybe the tuition information. And the third thing may be the top 10 reasons why your school. Remember, a lot of your parents are the first, the first time they're coming into your school. Maybe they have a young toddler dragging along behind them and they're somewhat distracted. If you hand them a document that has the institutional history of your school just in the application process, it is really overwhelming. Plus, a lot of, uh, a lot of parents now, you know, there are lots of choices. And mom is going to go and do all of the reconnaissance work, perhaps, and then take it all home and, and, and uh, have, to, have to weed through it. You want yours to be professional and direct. Uh, so you get your invitations printed, your marketing materials, your admissions packets ready ready to go. So as you're doing this now with getting your things ready, um, you want to take a look at, well, what is it that I really want to say? What do I want to say in my advertising? What do I want to say in that top 10 reasons for coming to my school? What's going to be my story? Well, your story is your mission. What is your mission as a school? We are you know, our school exists to develop the whole person, to spread the gospel message, and to make this world a better place. You know, it's probably a little bit more involved than that, but basically, yes, what is my mission? How do I execute my mission? I execute my mission by having a staff of 100% certified degree teachers committed to excellence in a beautiful facility with a 16 to 1 teacher to, or student to teacher ratio, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then what is my matriculation data and how is that disseminated? In other words, my mission is this. I execute it this way and I have the proven results in that 100% of my students go on to advanced mathematics, 100% of my students go on to advanced foreign language. It, you know, it's it's that kind of that kind of story that makes a compelling argument as to why that family should put their child in your school. So, when we do that, when we create our story, we are really creating the blueprint for everything that we're going to do. I mean, Grace Regan from Partners in Mission talked about that in terms of creating ambassadors for your mission. ISPD, Institute of School and Parish Development. Frank Donaldson has been talking about that for years, that you're creating ambassadors for your mission. Well, they can't possibly know, your school community can't possibly know every detail about your school the way maybe the principal does. But certainly, getting it, capturing it to a one-page document really helps. So in the Diocese of Arlington, we've created this one that is on this uh, slide, our script, as it were. We start with what is our mission and how is that disseminated through our schools and our teachers? And then what is our matriculation data? What is our success is our, in our students? And you should be able to do the same thing for your school. So again, what is my mission? How do I execute it? And what is my matriculation stats? So um, we, as, as again I said, we in, in Arlington here, we sort of have a whole theme on Discover Catholic Schools Week and how we present our data. So one of the things that we use to help us in that regard is to create animotos. And if you're not familiar with Animoto, they're very simple. It's very simple to use. You just got to make sure you have really not good pictures and, uh, and have an idea of a storyboard in mind. And uh, I'd like to share our Animoto with you now. Also, just so you know, it will be available to you. Um, Kate will be able to, to send you the link to this as well. So here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Animoto is very, very easy to use, and uh, I can manipulate that for other schools um, as it gets closer to, well, after this week, I'll pull the slide that says, you know, Discover Catholic Schools November 26th or November 16th or 22nd, and, you know, put up the uh, NCEA logo for our uh, Catholic Schools Week. So. Um, that may be a tool that will be useful for you. Uh, another way you can do this is through infographics. This is an infographic that came from NCA's website on uh, helping you to develop your message as a school, and uh, and in, in essence, then you know coming about with your brand. Uh, I just signed up for a webinar myself, and how to to learn how to do one of these things. So I just think that they're really eye-catching and really helpful for lots of folks uh, to understand about your school. So, so four weeks before your open house, you want to assemble your cast. You have the script. You know what your mission is. You know how you disseminate that mission, and you know the, how your success rate. So you're going to assemble your tour guides and your uh, student ambassadors. You're going to get your uh, admissions team together, your hospitality uh, committee, and you're going to make sure that the calendar is free of field trips for that day. Again, this is an opportunity for your school to really shine. You want as many people there as possible. Uh, Institute of School and Parish Development published a, uh, a paper not too long ago. Well, actually, it's been around for a couple of years now. It's called Expectations for Marketing Volunteers. I believe it is available on their website. And it just sort of helps to, uh, to you to figure out who is going to be a good volunteer for this project. If you have... Uh, Military families, it might be nice to have a tour guide that is a military family. Uh, if you have uh, PTO or home and school or, or uh, parent groups, somebody in your parent group, they may be helpful. Sometimes homeroom parents are helpful in that regard. Student ambassadors, I wouldn't go any lower than about fifth grade. And if you can get some high school kids, and if you're a high school, you can get some college kids to come onto your campus to help out, that would be great. Let's go back to that very first slide where we had the little boy that said, come and see. And the, the point about the magazine uh, with the big face on it, you know, you want these people to be examples of what this prospective family is going to see as, oh, I want my kid to be that kid. 
or I really love the way this child is so articulate. I want my child to be that way too. The admissions team should be ready to answer questions and they should understand the script as well as everyone else does. And then of course your hospitality committee should be available to uh, plan to have coffee, and tea, juice, muffins, everything of course on the school tablecloth with napkins with the school logo on it. And that goes back to that whole consistency uh, aspect of, uh, of getting your school ready. So the size and scope of the groups are going to really be determined by the kind of responses that come in. Ideally, you want to match a one-for-one one tour guide per family, but you know if you find you you can't do that and you have to double up on a few, that's fine too. Uh, I would absolutely, absolutely start the tour with the middle school. Again, going back to that matriculation data, that's very, very important. You want to show off the science lab, even if the person is only looking at kindergarten. You're looking to have them invest in a K through 8 or a K through 12 experience. So start with the oldest kids first and then you know weave your way down to the classroom. That's where the high school students or college students can be very, very helpful in that regard. Remember, they've already checked you out on social media and all that stuff, so they're just wanting to make sure that what you said is what you have. That day, it so should be oozing school spirit, and I'm I'm going to apologize for the clip art. I couldn't resist, but <laughs> bad habits are hard to break. It should be oozing school spirit. The it, the the welcoming should be the pastor and the principal. Remember, the school is a ministry of the parish. It is one of the most important ministries of the parish and a primary place for evangelization. So uh, if you're lucky enough to have a pastor that can clear his calendar, assuming no emergencies arise, and have him there, that is terrific. The school should have in this main area, whether it's a gymnasium or your library or a parish hall or what have you, should have school spirit wear. It should have uh, curriculum materials, maybe set up by grade. And with the theme, you know, if I'm in fifth grade, this is what I learn in fifth grade. If I'm in kindergarten, these are the things that I learn in kindergarten, along with the uh, curriculum materials. You can have, you know, when you think about going to a sporting event, one of the things that makes it more exciting is they have the sports team's colors everywhere, and they have the, they're selling all kinds of stuff everywhere, and it really lends itself to a much more festive mood. If you, if you think about going into retail stores, you'll see that the store itself is color coordinated. For example, uh, Target. You see the red and white everywhere, and it's very bright, and it's very, uh, the lettering is very open, and it just makes you feel good when you're in there. When you go into a Starbucks, the color scheme is you know, browns and comforting colors and, and, and the environment is uh, designed that you want to sit and drink coffee. Okay, so when you come into that school welcome area for that open house, it should be exciting, it should reflect education, it should reflect Catholic identity, it should reflect the welcoming nature of the church. That's why you need to have um, refreshments and that kind of that kind of thing going on. In addition, it would be wonderful to have a representative that uh, from the extended day program, if one exists, and then maybe one or two people to speak about the extracurriculars. Uh, that the school offers. You know, a lot of families or single parent families or both parents are employed 
and they're really worried about what they're going to do with that child from 3 to 6 p.m. every night. So being able to answer those questions at that time is really, really helpful. So you welcome them. There's a sign-in or registration that captures the person's name, maybe the child's name, what grade they're interested in, how they can be contacted versus, uh, via their home address as well as their email. A five-minute presentation, really no more than that, is required because your open house is generally going to be from about 9 to 11 or 9.30 to 11. Any more than that, the kids have to eat lunch somewhere, so you have to clean it all up and you know get the lunchroom ready for lunch. So a five-minute presentation with a brief welcome from the principal is all that is really required. Um, what I used to say at open houses is, you know, welcome. We're so glad you could be here to our school. We have a great school, and and but I'm the principal. You would expect me to say great things. I'm going to turn it over to the people who are here day in, day out as well, but the parents because those are the folks that you're going to run into at the grocery store. And that is your community. So you want to hear it from them with their experiences. Now, granted, they have a script to follow, but trust me, you want it to be authentic from them that you know they can say, yes, my son had this teacher, my daughter had that teacher. It was just terrific. I couldn't believe all the things that that teacher could you know, get this child to do. Uh, the matriculation data, again, really, really important. Catholic schools are extremely successful as compared to uh, as compared to public education, and so you really want to talk about that. Uh, a good uh, a good starting point is, of course, NTEA data that I mentioned earlier, but also the Center for uh, excuse me, the Council for American Private Education has a lot of really really good, good statistics uh, that you can then compare your school to if that is advantageous to you. Um, the school spirit items I already talked about. Uh, the children should be in their very best uniform. Many schools have two uniforms. They'll have a uniform that the children wear in the cold weather or for math days, and then they have a warm weather uniform. So, OK, it's Florida maybe, or Southern California, it's warm outside. If it's an open house, they shouldn't be wearing their short sleeve shirts. They should be wearing their best uniform. You want the school to really shine. A fresh flowers, again, if your school colors are green and gold, well, then I would make sure I had either sunflowers or some kind of yellow flower that, again, is going along with the school brand. The teachers in their most professional dress. This is not a day for, let's dress down, let's have a jeans day. <laughs> um, this is a day that they really need to put their best foot forward. Uh, your curriculum materials I already spoke of, and snacks and refreshments we talked about as well. All right, so they're in the tour. They're doing everything on the tour. They're talking about how great the school is. And a parent says, oh, gee, I want to sit in on the third grade class. Absolutely, go for it. There should be chairs at the back of the classroom ready for that. And the tour guides need to be a little flexible in that regard if, in fact, the, the prospective family wants to, uh, wants to observe the teaching in action. And teachers should be ready for that. So at the tour conclusion, the principal is back at the, at the uh, meeting area. And that is where the admission materials or admission packet is then handed out. OK? Otherwise, if you give it to them at the beginning, that's what they spend their time looking at. And they're not paying attention to the school. And this is where you're going to provide opportunity for one-on-one -on -one dialogue with their principal. Sometimes parents will say, oh, this was just really great. I want to bring my husband back, or I want to bring my uh, my wife back, or I want to bring my mother back, and you know. So you have to decide as a school, you know, how flexible you are willing to be to accommodate additional one-on-one -on -one tours or face time with those folks. 
also, in that regard, understand that different cultures look at these kinds of things differently. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops has a course that they, um, they have developed uh, called uh, Building Intercultural Competence for Ministers and really explores some of the dynamics, the cultural dynamics among other cultures. So that might be a, a, uh, a good thing to kind of look at uh, when you are, when you're looking at different ethnic groups and how they, how best to, uh, to greet them and welcome them. Then, oh my goodness, I forgot uh, something really important, and that was on the invitation. Can, the invitation should be hand addressed. I am a big believer in the hand addressed invitations, and I'll tell you why. As a consumer myself, I go to the mailbox, I get the things out of my mailbox, if it's just a flyer or a postcard or something, some advertising something, I don't even read it. I just put it right in the recycling bin. So that is good money wasted, okay? If it's addressed to me, then I am more likely to open it. And now, in my case, I don't have children that are school age, so I probably would not make use of it. But um, I, if I do have children, I'm more likely to see that. And if the, if the invitation has been addressed by someone I know, and they've indicated a little postscript at the bottom, can hardly wait to see you, looking forward to having you there, whatever, then again, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to have that personal connection. So follow-up that day after the open house is over, it's followed up with an email thanking that person for attending and offering to answer any questions. Okay. In addition to that is the personalized thank you from the principal on school note cards. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything big, long, lengthy, whatever, but basically just thank you for taking the time to come to visit our school. That is the message. I'm not going to, you know, principals are, do a great job of, of putting it in something that they would normally say. But basically you're thanking people for taking the time because maybe some of them have taken time off of work to come and see the school. That's why you want it to make sure it's a, it's a really uh, meaningful experience. The captured data also gives you uh, an opportunity to invite them to future events. So that's part of that whole barely recruiting uh, program that I kind of stole from, and that is maintaining contact with that individual for future events is important. So let's say your school community is having a pizza movie night or a, a, a picnic or a 5K run or, I don't know, the, thank, the kindergarten is doing a Thanksgiving play and you know, their dress rehearsal, so you invite those people to that. I don't know, but it still gives you, sort of opens the door for saying, hi, remember me? You know, you were my tour, I was your tour guide. I'd really love to see you. We're having this little May crowning, and we'd love to see you come. It's really a lot of fun. The results of all of this is going to be four things. One, School pride and goodwill. Nothing gets you more excited. I mean, think about your own homes when you're having people coming for Thanksgiving or for Christmas. Then getting your house ready, getting your things in order to welcome them in. You feel good when you get all that baking done. Maybe not. Maybe you're tired. But you, you're, you feel good about that. Um, the fact that you have reached out to different members of your school community, your pastor, maybe somebody on your school board, maybe your um, parent organization, perhaps a teacher, uh, students, uh, graduates, now they have become informed about the organization. And the fact that you've 
done it in a script format, they're trained. And having trained ambassadors for the mission is really, really important. They now are vested in the success of your open house. When that family that was on their tour comes into your school, they're going to feel good. They're going to feel like, wow, I was part of their decision in coming to, my, to coming to our school. So I now have a little bit of ownership in this. And the, res the end result is increased enrollment. So everybody wants to feel like they belong and that they're invited in. That is part of being human. Human beings are gregarious, and, and we don't want to be ostracized. So that's why we wear team jerseys, and that's why we um, you know, wear the clothing that we do and, and perhaps have some of the buying habits that we do because we want to feel like we belong. And so it's no different in that. Only in this case, the product is salvation. It's evangelization. It is developing a whole person to become something great. So that's why we do it. My resources. Uh, for this, for this, the NCEA, great resources, Institute of uh, School and Parish Development, Frank Donaldson up there at ISPD, Partners in Mission, Animoto, um, you know, and when I learn how to do an infographic, maybe next time it'll be an infographic. So uh, that's all I have, and uh, I'll take questions. Hi, Renee. This is Kate. Um, someone asked a question about how much money should be allotted to making a successful marketing appeal. Or do you have a range, maybe? Um, well, it depends on it depends on how many what you're public what you're publishing, and how many people you're sending it to, and how you're doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, it can range anywhere from a direct mail piece of I don't know, $500 for something really, really small to, you know, you can spend five, ten thousand 10000 if you want it to be really big. I mean, I would, I would uh, suggest if that individual wants to contact me, you know, I can, I can give them a little bit more specifics and guidance. A lot of times, too, your local printer has a lot of ideas that, you know, maybe you haven't even thought of, and they can help you out with uh, some direction. Well, and also maybe to think about the cost per package. Um, you know, if it makes sense to have two dollars for all of this printed material go per person. Uh, again, if it's a smaller or a larger mailing that you're doing, um, you know, right. you could also look at it at a cost per unit basis as well. Exactly, and this is the other thing. So let's just say that you spend $5,000, and that's a lot, but let's say $5,000 to print up all the things that you want to print up and photographers and all of that stuff. Okay, so if you get one family, that family is going to, and let's just assume your tuition is $5,000 for a year, you're going to have that family for nine years. That's forty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So you've made an investment of five, and what you realize from that investment is forty-five. And now let's just multiply that by maybe five kids instead of one kid, one family. So now it's forty-five thousand dollars a year over a nine-year period. Not to mention everything that their families are going to bring to the table in terms of volunteer hours and and other other assistance that they could be to the school. So, you know, when you're looking to redo your marketing materials, really do it right. Make sure that the photographs are good. Make sure that you follow your style guide and having the right RGB code for your color, whatever your school colors are. Or, and, you know, what is your font style, what is the font family, what is the logo, and protect that. Don't let, you know, versions of your logo go all over the place. It's one. And if you do it right the first time, then you've got the style template. You don't have to go back and, and reinvent the wheel. Okay. 
And on a related note, um, you offered specific recommendations for what should and should not be in an enrollment in an enrollment yes. package. But do you have any tips or suggestions about using Animoto or some other video software? Um, you know, in terms of link or images used. Sure. Uh, for a for a everyone should have at least a thirty second something on their website. The average person spends five seconds on a website. And if they don't, if they have to scroll down to find things, then they, they get off of it. And if there is some kind of a video or an infographic or something like that, they're 88% more likely to stay on that website. The Animoto is, has three different levels. And no, I'm not getting paid by them <laughs> to talk about them. But uh, the first level is free. So I would say go ahead and play around with it. If you really like it, then you can go up a level. And one account, you can make hundreds of Animotos. Other people in your school can make Animotos. And, uh, and they're, they're very useful that way. Um, you know, but you don't have to do that. The, there are some basic templates and basic designs. You can import your own music if you'd like. Uh, you can use the music that they have. So I would say, you know, doing something about 30 seconds, I wouldn't go any longer than about three minutes. Nobody wants to sit through that. It's too hard to look at. It's too hard to stay focused on. Right. Okay. And uh as far as the, oh, the admissions packet, um, the welcome letter from the pastor and the principal, a, a uh, sort of list, checkoff list of all the things that are necessary to complete an application, uh, and the tuition information on a separate piece of paper, because that may change from year to year, whereas the other things really don't, and the, uh, maybe the top ten reasons why your school. Okay, great. Well, as you uh, mentioned, are, you're available for folks to contact you after this webinar and sure. email or other method uh, a preference for you for how folks can be in touch. Uh, email is great. I mean, certainly if you want to uh, call me, that's fine too. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm happy to, to help whomever I can help. Okay, great.